Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Ahead of the Curve, Four Next-Gen Strategies for Productivity and Profit, brought to you by Technology and Services Industry Association and sponsored by Skilljar. My name is Vanessa Lucero, and I'll be your moderator for today. I would now like to introduce our presenters today. John Ragsdale, Distinguished Researcher and Vice President, Technology Ecosystems for TSIA. Caroline Van Dyke, Head of Content for Skilljar. And Haley Bates, Solutions Engineer, also with Skilljar. As with all of our TSIA webinars, we do have a lot of exciting content to cover in the next 45 minutes. So let's jump right in and get started. John, over to you. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. As we have seen the industry shift to a subscription economy, one department that is really in the center of that transformation is education services or customer learning. And today we're gonna to be talking about some of the opportunities and challenges uh, for moving from that old cost center mentality to definitely revenue and profit. Uh, we know that at least half of our members now have a business model of being revenue positive. They may not be there yet, but that is the goal. And one of the reasons for that is really the role of education services has changed. And this chart shows that the charter of education services is now primarily to increase product adoption which is a charter that they share with the customer success organization who 88% say that they are charged with customer adoption. And obviously the more customers adopt and use the product, the more value they get, uh, the higher their renewal rates. So there is a very clear correlation, and we'll be talking about that today, between uh, learning consumption, product adoption, and revenue. Uh, so I think uh, this, this chart that Maria Manning Chapman, who is the Distinguished Vice President of Education Services Research for TSIA, she provided this data from her benchmark uh, that really shows the maturity model uh, on how education services teams are progressing. And we still see uh, some of the legacy on-premise companies are really struggling a bit with this move to an all-digital learning experience. Uh, but Maria notes that startups who were born in the cloud companies tend to be moving rather quickly into the maturing section. And our goal uh, at TSIA is to help them all move in to that uh, option, optimized functional business unit where they are set up uh, to fund their own growth. They're a profitable group. They're focused on revenue and value. Uh, so before I go further, I'd love to ask our guest speakers today, uh, Carolyn and Haley, does this reflect what you are seeing in the industry? Are you seeing more focus now on revenue and a little less uh, companies in that cost center mentality? Yeah, absolutely, John. We're seeing that pretty consistently with our customers as well as people who are looking to dip their toes into education for the first time. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about four next-gen strategies for education services. And I know that a lot of you are doing your company kickoffs right now and your strategy planning for the year. So I think this is really gonna be helpful and timely information. So we're gonna talk about uh, automating workflows, the use of artificial intelligence and Gen AI for efficiency, uh, certifying users for adv advocacy, retention, and definitely revenue. Uh, syndicating courses for extended reach, which was something I learned new for this webinar. So that's a really interesting topic. And we're going to close out on that whole cost center to profit center discussion and really about selling curriculum and some of the mechanics uh, of putting that together. So Carolyn, do you have any thoughts on why we're here today before we dive in? Yes, aside from enjoying this company and the conversations we've even had building up to this webinar, I have to say we're going to have a really um, interesting conversation today. And naturally just saying that we're kicking things off with automation on purpose because it can feel like taking all these big strategic steps, you know, sounds great on paper and everyone wants to do it, but there's a lot to get done in your day to day, especially if you have lean teams. So we're really going to let you know that on those day to day tasks that might be bogging you down, that's where these advancements in automation and AI used in the right way, of course, 
can help you get to these next generation strategies. We're not going to ignore that, you know, it takes some work, but a lot of folks are able to move in this direction because a lot of those day-to-day -day tasks are, are getting a little bit more streamlined and we can help you out there. So with that, I'll hand it back to John and we'll get into some of this data. Okay, so let's talk about our first next-gen strategy, automating workflows and the use of AI for efficiency. And I have some data here uh, showing that as companies begin moving away from the traditional classroom approach uh, to more of a digital and online learning approach, uh, we still see that you know it's taking a, a, a lot more time involved in the creation and maintenance of digital content. And some of that is obvious, and you're going to be able to scale that content to thousands of people. So the fact that it's a little more effort than PowerPoint slides for a classroom is cool. But I know from talking to a lot of tech companies that they often are saddled with some pretty outdated technology. They're using learning management systems that were originally purchased for employees. They're not really working well for customers. And the digital capabilities, uh, let's just say that education services sometimes isn't the first one in line for cool new technology. So if you haven't refreshed your technology for a while, uh, this is a really good webinar for you. And a recent technology survey that I did showed that uh, more than half and two thirds of our members in some technology are investing in education services tools. And this digital uh, learning is driving a lot of that spending. On the topic of AI and Gen AI, um, I have to say that, uh, again, education services may not have been the first ones in line when people started putting in budget requests. Uh, we see that uh, more than half of our members, 58%, are not using AI currently for content development. And as a comparison, 72% of our support members are already experimenting with Gen AI for knowledge-based articles, customer self-service content. So huge potential here uh, and something that I'm hoping uh, companies are going to be experimenting this year and definitely uh, going to really help you speed up uh, the, the process of creating digital content, maintaining digital content, uh, et cetera. So uh, Carolyn, could you talk about uh, some of the uses of automation and AI and what you are seeing from your customers? 